Hey guys, Kaltorak here. Today, I want to show you how to boost Oldemon on your level 40 mage. It's a pretty fun farm and a lot easier than SM Cath in my opinion. We are looking at about 63 mobs in 15 minutes if you are clearing efficiently. Looking at roughly 40k XP per hour. There is a safe spot for your boosties, and they will never get aggro here. Even on the attempts I mess up and die, my boosties never got aggroed and died. For spec, I am doing this as Deep Frost. Improved Blizzard is nice for stacking the mobs once they begin the split. Ice Barrier, Ice Block, and Cold Snap are all required. For runes, we are using Living Bomb, Living Flame, Regeneration, Spell Power, and Spell Frost Bolt. For consumes, the ones that are required are Mana Potions and Swiftness Potions. You will need 3 Swiftness Potions and 5 Mana Potions per reset if you are going as fast as possible. I choose to bring full consumes though, and obviously world buff helps too. We are doing this boost from the back door entrance. The Oldemon boost is broken down into 5 pools, all of them using this kite point here. I assume all races should be able to do this jump, but don't know for sure. Gnome has no problems with it. The first pull is the Obsidian Sentinel. If you have seen my solo Celestial Orb video, we go over how to solo this guy in that video. He's super easy but your kill time may change based off how many reflects happen. Slowly whittle him down, use Kona Cold and Living Flame to make him take as much damage as possible. When he's in his tiniest mode, he does very little damage. You can face tank him and wand him at this point. Pull number two is one of the harder pulls in here in my opinion. You're pulling these three healer mobs. They are annoying for many reasons. One, they are constantly casting random spells so they are declumping all the time. 2. They cast an Annoying Silence. 3. They cast a Heal. And 4. They cast Shadow Word Pain, so you're also taking lots of damage. You have to slowly whittle them down and try and interrupt the heals and force them to start running away. Silence can screw you up though, preventing you from counterspelling. You want to avoid using Ice Block on this pool, as you'll need it in the next ones and need to save Cold Snap as well. This pool took me the most practice to get down, but once you do, it's easy. Pull number 3 is our first Swiftness Potion pull. When drinking, make sure to cast Ice Barrier around 80% mana. This makes it so Ice Barrier's cooldown has ended halfway through your run, which you will need. This pull has one of the Healer Dwarves in it. I start the pull by unloading as much damage into him as possible. Kona Cold, Living Blom, and Fire Blast. I then run forward to this first bat and blink ahead. I will then try and catch these bats here in the Frost Nova. Then refresh my Ice Barrier to try and not get dazed. I then run to the end of this hall, make sure I wait a few seconds because I need Blink's cooldown to be up before Ice Block ends. I will then Ice Block here. Once Ice Block ends, I'll Blink away and use Swiftness Pot. You will not make it to the Kite Point without Swiftness. There are too many silences from the Dwarves and Bats that will prevent you from blinking without Swiftness Potion. I will then continue to use Living Bomb on the Dwarf as well as the other mobs, starting to get early damage out. I'll blink again at this point to get into position, then cast regen on myself. I'll cast Blizzard at this location here to get them the clump. Prio Living Bomb damage as well as Fire Blast into the Healer Dwarf, and make sure to try and counterspell its heal. You want this guy to die as soon as possible in this pool. You then just begin to do the normal kite, slowly whittling them down with Blizzard, Living Bombs, and Living Flames. Pool number 4 we start by running up this path here. You need Ice Block for this pull, so if the cooldown is less than 1 minute, wait for it, because we really want to save Cold Snap for the final pull. I'll pull the far mobs of Living Bomb, and making sure I'm aggroing all the Scorpions. I'll blink here, and then Frost Nova here. I'll get all the way down here, and make sure that I grab the Scorpions and Ice Block. Same as before, I'll then blink out of the Ice Block, and then Swiftness Potion, while spreading bombs. We then repeat the kill phase from pool number 3. For pull 5, we cold snap for ice blocks cooldown, so we can just get going straight into it. We start by running down this path here, I Kona cold the first mob, and then blink here. I try and run as far forward as possible to make sure I get these trogs at the stairs. It's possible that we may be able to handle more of these trogs to the right, but I found that too many oracles can be a problem in my current gear. I then ice block, wait for the mobs to stack, then blink out in swiftness pot. If there are oracles, I prio them with living bombs. We then get to our kill spot and slowly kill them, prior breaking healing totem and counterspelling their healing wave. Okay, that's the pool for now.
On my best pulls, I was able to clear it in roughly 17 minutes for 10k XP. This was without the 3% XP from sleeping bags. With better execution and better gear, we can easily get this below 15 minutes, making it a solid 40k XP per hour. It's a lot easier than SM Cath boosts, but I think in time, SM Cath and Armory boosts will become the meta. If you are struggling with those though, Ulda might be a good alternative. A few benefits to this farm is there are a vendor and repair right here, which is nice. The downsides are there are a lot of high level elites outside the back door. This can be painful for getting boosties inside. It's also a PvP zone. As of right now, there are no warlocks summoning here, but maybe if this farm catches on, warlocks will start summoning here. In terms of raw loot, it's pretty bad. About 26 silver per reset from raw mobs. Vendor trash is about 1 gold per run, and I was getting pretty meg greens. This farm is good, it'll be coming from boosties. Can possibly charge anywhere from 5 to 8 gold per reset, but that could go up if this farm gets cleaner. Anyways, we'll see if this boosting method catches on or not. Way easier than Cath, but we gotta see if there's enough demand for it. I'll be ending this video with one of my full clears. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Cheers boys, and good luck with this Oldham farm.